hey guys welcome to this channel in this video i'm going to talk about some important topic so without any further ado let's start the session so if you are preparing for the exam then it's very important to understand the difference between rds replicas and multi az and understand exactly the use cases for those so this lecture is really dedicated to understand read replicas and multi az so first let's get started with the read replicas read replicas as the name indicates it helps you to scale your reads so let's have an example here we have our application and we have an rds database instance and our application perform reads and writes to our database instance but say we want to scale the reads because that's main database instance cannot scale enough it receives too many requests well we can create up to five read replicas and they can within the same availability zone cross availability zone or cross region so three different options and they are very important to remember so say we have another rds instance read replica and another one and what will happen is that there will be an asynchronous replication between the main rds database instance and the two read replicas asynchronous that means that the reads are eventually consistent what that means is that for example if your application reads from the read replica before they had the chance to replicate the data then you may get old data and this is why it's called eventually consistent asynchronous replicant and these replicas they can be awesome for reading for scaling reads but they can also be promoted to their own database so you can take one of these replicas and say okay i want it to be its own database now and take writes and so you promote it to its own database it's completely out of the replication mechanism after that but it's live as has its own life cycle afterward so in case you want to use read replicas the main application in orange in the top of the screen must update the connection string to leverage the list of all the read replicas you have in your rds cluster okay so let's talk about classic use case for your read replicas so in this example we have a production database and it is taking on normal load so here we go our production database is having a read and writes to our main rds database instance and the new team comes in and say we want to run some reporting and some analytics on top of your data and so if you plug in that reporting application onto the main rds database instance then it's going to overload it and possibly slow down the production application and you don't want that so instead what you do as a solution architect is you create a read replica to run the new workload there so you create a read replica there is some asynchronous uh, replication that happens between your main rds db instance and your read replica and then your reporting application can just do reads from your read replica and run the analytics there the production application is completely unaffected in that case and that's perfect so remember if you have a read replica you need to assure that it is only for select type of statements and selects is a sql keyword selects means read and so you cannot use keywords such as insert update or delete which change database itself okay read replicas is only for reads so let's talk about the networking cost associate with rds read replica 
So in AWS, you should know that normally there is a cost when the data goes from one availability zone to another. But there are exceptions and these exceptions are usually for managed service. So for RDS read replica, this is a managed service. If you read replica is within the same region, okay, different AZ but same region, you are not paying that fee. So what this means that if you have a RDS DB instance in US is to 1A and then a read replica in US is to 1B and there is a synchronized replication because this is a read replica even through the traffic goes from one AZ to a different AZ that replication traffic is going to be free because RDS is a managed service and they give you that traffic for free. But if you are using a cross region replica, so for example, you are in one region US East 1 and you go to another region EU West 1, then your RDS DB instance and your read replica will have replication that will go across regions and this will incur a replication fees for your network. So now finally let's talk about RDS multi AZ and multi AZ is manually used for disaster recovery. So we have our application and it performs the reads and writes to our master database instance which is in availability zone A and what we think you have is a synchronous replication to a standby instance in AZB and they will replicate every single change in the master synchronously. So that means that when your application writes to the master, the change need to also be replicated to the standby to be accepted. And so what we get out of it is one DNS name. So your application talks to one DNS name and in case there is a problem with the master, there will be an automatic failover to the standby database. Thanks to that one DNS name. So thanks to this, we increase the availability. This is why it's called multi AZ. And there will be failover in case we lose an entire AZ or we lose the network or there is an instance or storage failure for the master database. In which case, obviously, the standby database will become the new master. You don't need to do any manual intervention in your app as long as it tries to keep on connecting to your database. Automatically at some point it will fail over to the standby that will be promoted as the master and you will be good. And it's not used for scaling. So as you can see here the standby database is just for standby. No one can read to it. No one can write to it. It's just here as a failover in case anything goes on with your master database. So quick question is, is there a possibility to have the read replicas being set up as multi AZ for disaster recovery? And the answer is yes. You can set up your read replicas as multi AZ if you want it to. And there is a common exam question, okay? So that's it for the difference between read replicas and multi AZ. But you need to absolutely understand this going into the exam because a lot of questions will go and be about it. So a question that can come up in the exam is around how do we make an RDS database go from single AZ to multi AZ. So what you should know is that it is a zero downtime operation that means you do not need to stop the database to go from single AZ to multi AZ. The only thing you need to do is to click on modify for the database and enable multi AZ. That means that your RDS database instance is going to go to have a master 
to have a standby DB with synchronous replication without you doing anything except modifying that setting and the database will not stop. Now this is what the exam will ask you but I want to show you what will happen behind the scene for it to work. So the following will happen internally. There will be a snapshot taken by RDS automatically of your main database and that the snapshot will be restored into a new standby database okay and then once the standby database is restored there will be synchronization established between the two database and so therefore the standby database will catch up to the main RDS database and there you go you will be in a multiple AZ setup. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you like it and I will see you in the next lecture. So if you found this video helpful, then like and share this video to your friend. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.